right, so here's what we're doing. I am currently on the way to uh, one of my best friends, her son, he's, he's doing his first communion today, so I'm on my way to her house. But as soon as I get home today, I am gonna do a video. And that video is a new thing that I'm gonna do here that I've been wanting to do for a while, which is I'm gonna give authors a second chance. <laughs> So I have written people off in the past based on a really bad experience or a really negative experience with a book and then come back years, sometimes decades later and had a completely different experience. One of those is Jane Austen. I famously, well not famously, but in my head famously, I love Emma, it's one of my favorite books. It's five stars, but I gave it like three stars the first time because I thought it was long and boring and I didn't like Emma. And now all of those things are things that I like about it. Another example is Samantha Shannon. I will probably be doing a video about her later this year because one, the book that I didn't like from her that made me write her off as an author, at least temporarily, was The Bone Season. I read that the year it came out, 2013, and I was like, this author needs to cook. She is not done baking. We are, this is too... It's very ambitious, but it's not done well. And I was like, clearly I need to come back and revisit her later, and I did, and I read Prior of the Orange Tree, and I loved it so much, and I gave it five stars. So here's what we're doing today. This is a little bit lower stakes. The book that I that I read, well, no, I gave Bone Season two stars also, is a two-star book. I read Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Now, it's been years since I read that. I think I read it in 2021 not positive. I got it on a whim. Like there was the rare book of the month month that I skipped and then cause nothing interested me. And I, instead of getting a main pick, I picked a member fave and I was like, well, what the heck? Everybody won't, sh even though like the book, ah, sorry, <laughs> the books didn't sound all that interesting to me. I was like, what the heck? I'll give it a try. I'm a curious person. Let's, let's try this out. Why are people losing their minds over this guy whose real name is Todd. I just I just like to point that out when I can. And everything about it seemed like it would be my kind of thing. It's a, a haunted house story-ish. It's got a book within a book. It's got creepy past. It's got a mystery. It, twists and turns, you know, it sounded sound fun. Nope. I was so underwhelmed. Now, I don't remember exactly the specifics of what I thought was so underwhelming at the time, because again, it's been like three years and I've read like 600 books since then. I don't even think I'm joking. This, this is it. And I made sure to read one that I, everyone liked. Home Before Dark and Lock Every Door are the two that everyone likes, who likes Riley Sager. And I was like, what, this, really? I, I thought it was, boring. I did, I did not. The, this is probably the kicker. I hated the writing style. I hated it so much. So Riley said, you're not for me. But in the meantime, people have not shut up about him still. And luckily I, I was very gratified. Survived the night and uh, what was the one after that? House Across the Lake didn't get great reviews except from some people that Kayla freaking loves. House Across the Lake. I read the synopsis and I spoiled myself and I was like, really? That's it? Anyway, I just, I just like, he's not my thing. So I wrote him off, but then he published the only one left. And I was like, well, sh that sounds really interesting. But I was like, but it's Riley Sager and he's going to it up and I'm not going to like it. And it's going to be boring and I'm just going to get mad. But I'm going to, I'm a, I, the curiosity reached peak. Whenever I say I'm not going to read a book that I'm curious about, it just sits in my head and I'm like, I end up reading it. So we're gonna read the only one left. I apologize in advance. This is going to be a spoiler review. I am going to react and explain what's going on so I can fully explain my thoughts. I'm hopeful that I will like it, but I also think that I probably won't, but I'm gonna go into it with an open mind. Like I want to like things. Like I never don't wanna like things, especially things that so many people love. It just makes me upset. I will mark the spoilers so if they're, well, maybe I won't. We'll see how many spoilers versus non-spoilery thoughts I end up having. If, if mostly it's spoilers, I'm not gonna mark them. I'll let you know. Editing Ashley, put it in here, give them a message. Uh, but if it turns out that it's a spoiler, just assume spoilers going forward. So I guess 
Goodbye for now, people who haven't yet read the book and don't want to be spoiled. I'll see you another time. People who don't care about being spoiled for this book, you're welcome to stay. People who have already read the book, hi. I'm very sorry if I'm about to shit on a book that you like. Okay, so here's what I know about The Only One Left Going In. I just want to give you my pre-reading thoughts. It is a book about a very old woman. I think she can't talk. And I think that she communicates by typewriter. And there's a rhyme, like a Lizzie Borden type rhyme. She, it is believed, the community she lives in believes widely that she killed her entire family, but she wasn't convicted. I don't think I could be wrong about that. And she lives in the crumbling house on the cliff like this on the cover. She has a caregiver. And so our main character is the caregiver. She has been newly hired. I think she has a sketchy past also. So anyway, I, the, those two people and their backstories are going to collide. And I think that the old lady is going to tell the younger lady her story by typewriter. Which, it, I mean, this is not a new idea. This is stuff that's been done like this before. And actually, I, I hope this isn't the case, but Riley Sager likes to crib his plots. So uh, it's just, I'm getting very strong before reading. I'm getting very strong Dolores Claiborne vibes, which is Stephen King. For those of you who haven't read Dolores Claiborne, I highly recommend that book. It is a book about a middle-aged woman who has been accused of murdering her employer. She's also a caretaker for a very elderly ill woman. And she and this woman have this toxic uh, codependent relationship where the, she's the only person who can take care of this, this very foul, vicious woman. But they still have this weird affection for each other. So the, she's arrested for the murder of this old lady and she sits down with the cops and she said, here's the deal. I did not murder my employer but I did murder my husband. Do you want the story? So the whole book is told in her confession to these cops in her hometown about how she ended up working with this woman, her relationship with the lady, and what really happened there, but also before that, what happened with her husband and her children. And it is like a sort of proto-feminist horror novel. And I just loved Dolores. It's very vernacular, uh, not vernacular, uh, jocular is the word I'm looking for maybe chatty chat very conversational that's the word conversational and anyway it's a great time but I'm just getting very strong Dolores Claiborne vibes so if, if it better just distinguish itself from Dolores Claiborne is all I have to say so with all of that said I'm gonna drive now and <laughs> I will check in later after I've read the first couple chapters hi I'm newly awoken I fell asleep reading this last night. I don't have much to say so far. I still don't like his writing style. He seems like he's trying very hard, but his also his writing is full of sentence fragments. So the so far it's split into two parts, just like Home Before Dark. This is he's got a formula. Like maybe the ending's different, but he's got a formula. So the it's split into the first person narrative of a young woman. Uh, in this case, she's a caregiver. She has been on suspension for six months for having somebody, one of her patients, die under her care. Sorry, I should have <laughs> waited to do this till after I got ready, but whatever. And it's heavily implied that she actually did have something to do with the death, whether helping the person commit suicide or or something like that or, or something else. But she was cleared of any wrongdoing. Oh, there's my tea. Oops. Um... Hold on. Hey, baby. Nope. You can't go in there. No kitties in the pantry. Okay. <laughs> so, where was I? Hopefully we can do this the next five minutes before my timer goes off. So basically, she's been hired I mean, it's her boss basically gives her the, the job nobody wants of the caregiver of this woman. And it's like a game of chicken. Like he thinks she's going to quit rather than take care of her. But she takes the job because she needs the money. And her father hates her. <laughs> and the second, I mean, the, I'm right now I'm at the part where she's meeting Lenora Hope, which is the woman for the first time. And she doesn't talk. And she lives in this house on a cliff. And she has a creepy staff. And they all wear uniforms like 
fancy uniforms. By the way, this takes place in the 1980s. I, I don't know why. Maybe because friggin' Riley Sager wanted the main character to type on a typewriter rather than a computer. I, I mean, literally, I think that's the only reason that it's set in the 80s, is so that there could be a typewriter involved without it being weird. I, I, I don't know. And then the second part of the narrative is the excerpts from the story that Lenora Hope is telling to Kit, the main character. And just like within Home Before Dark, the book within the book is not good. Like, if you're telling somebody a story, it's not like she sat down and wrote herself a book. Like, that's not what she's doing, I don't think. But it's unnecessarily formal. And, like, whenever she talks about something that happened in the past, she goes into the scene like a writer rather than somebody telling a story of what happened. And I mentioned Dolores Claiborne earlier. That is, like, the perfect example of how a person would actually tell a story to somebody written down rather than this. I mean, I'm entertained-ish. I fell asleep last night, but maybe that I was just really tired. But I just, Riley Sager, I don't. I feel like he didn't put any effort into this. There's no soul. I don't know. I just, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep my, well, I mean, I clearly I'm not as open-minded about this as I thought I was going to be because he's already annoying me and I'm only on page 52. I don't know, but whatever. I'll check back in um, if something important happens or if I have something to say. Hi. Okay, so it's like 5 o'clock on Sunday. I have gotten almost nothing read this entire weekend. But I am now 100 pages into the only one left. The problem is that I accidentally reactivated my Netflix subscription and then watched the half first half of Bridgerton Season 3. And now I'm Googling the carriage scene and re-watching the carriage scene. And then I found out that... Mr. Carson from Downton Abbey is married to Umbridge from Harry Potter, a.k.a. Amelda Staunton, and their daughter plays Penelope's older sister, Prudence, on Bridgerton. Anyway, um, I, I don't have much more to say about this right now, but I figured I should check in. It's fine. I'm not hating it. The The present day narrative is, is still much more interesting than the typewriter narrator narrative although the main character is kind of stupid she's like her client is this invalid she's she's not capable of of moving and bathing herself and changing her own underpants she's not gonna hurt anybody and then the character's like scared i don't know it just seems like the wrong reaction to be scared of an infirm elderly woman like maybe grossed out or maybe like wary sure but i don't i don't know just todd what are you doing get, get some nuance please I mean, maybe people don't care about nuance in a Riley Sager book, but uh, this may be why I don't like him so much. Anyway, right now I would say this is probably a three-star book, which is better than the last time, but we'll see. We'll see what's going on. I mean, she's still only just gotten to the house, and she's just had her first, like, day of work. Apparently, oh, spoilers, the patient that she is accused of killing was her mother, so that explains why her dad isn't talking to her anymore if he thinks that it's her fault that her mom died. But the poor woman was dying of stomach cancer and she was in a crazy amount of pain. Even if she did kill her mother or help her mom die, like, who's going to blame her for that? Like, I sure as f*** wouldn't. Like, would he rather his wife, like, rot in a bed and be in pain and miserable? And I, I just, uh, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. Hopefully I can get something done. Okay, bye. Okay, well, I called it. Spoilers. Spoilers. The previous nurse, who's only been missing for a week, who mysteriously left all of her stuff in the room... She did. Guess what? Also, anybody else who went missing and was never seen from again, also dead. Haven't confirmed that yet, but this it's, it's predictable. It's very predictable. I'm probably going to be able to predict everything that's going to happen. We'll see. You guys will be my witnesses. Okay, I'm going to keep reading. There's my baby. 
I don't have a comforter on because Lily shat in the bed. So, just so everyone knows, like, right there. She just shat right there. So my comforter is being dry cleaned. Hi, Pippin. Oh, don't mind my laundry. Pippin. Oh, big boy. Anyway, I'm on chapter 23. And there is a secret baby. Secret baby. But also I'm confused because she's in love with this dude. And they're not married, obviously. But I like I swear it said earlier in the book that he was married. And why aren't they talking about his wife? Why aren't you talking about his wife? It's all money, money, judgment. Am I going to be disowned? Blah. What? The wife. The wife. I'm behind because I was cooking dinner, which was a disaster. And I pulled a hot pan out of the oven with a glove. And then I waited five minutes and I thought, oh, well, it's sure. It, like, just, it's, it's cool now. And I touched it. And it was not cool, and I screamed, and I burnt my fingies, and I haven't been able to hold anything in this hand for two hours. I've just had it up here, and like, it's not that bad of a burn. You can't even really see, but I can feel it, and my hand got all swollen. It's okay now, so I'm going to start reading again, but basically all I was doing for the last two hours was um, YouTubing Bridgerton Season 3 promos, so I have no regrets. I'm gonna go read now. Um, I'm sleepy. I'm trying really, I got to page 213. I'm very sleepy. Hi, baby. Okay, there's a cat coming up here. Come on, come on. Yeah, okay. Something that's bothering me about this book is, your brain's very slow, hold on. There's a very limited pool of suspects. And he's doing everything in his power to sow doubt and make it so that, like, one of three things has happened. Also, now we have a questionable paternity because it turns out... Oh, sorry, honey. Uh, it turns out that Lenore's dad wasn't her dad. <laughs> that he married her mom for her money and kind of trapped her into it by, like, threatening <sighs> the father. And he went away. Anyway, so, like, basically right now, she's in the middle of doubting whether Lenora even is sick. If she's, like, faking, like, it's spoilers for Verity. A Verity situation. I haven't even read that book, because I haven't read any Colleen Hoover books, but I know about Verity, because I looked at the spoilers. Um, there's three options, uh, right now. Well, no, wait, what were the three? I swear there were three. So, she keeps hearing footsteps in the night in Lenore's room because they have adjoining rooms and sh she's seen shadows moving and then things have mysteriously moved that shouldn't have moved if, Lorna if Lenora can't walk and only has the use of one arm and only then with help paper disappearing from a typewriter or stuff like that. So the three options for that, number one somebody from the house the maid, Jesse, the cook, Mrs. Baker, the housekeeper, Carter, is that his name? The groundskeeper. And then some, or some mysterious person randomly breaking into the house has been like breaking in every night and walking around Lenora's room and doing weird shit. Number two, as Lenora tells her, it's her sister's ghost. <laughs> so I know that a couple of times Riley Sager has gone paranormal, but I don't think this is one of his paranormal books. I don't think, of course, then I didn't spoil myself, though. Like, I spoiled, my, I spoiled myself on the endings of all the other, all of his other books, but not this one. So that's the second option, is that there actually is a ghost of her sister. And then the third option is that Lenora is faking. Wait, did I already say that? Oh, no, I didn't. I just mentioned it a little bit. The third option is that Lenora is faking being ill. But as the main character points out, that is so unlikely because it's crazy. Just like it was crazy in Verity. <laughs> because, like, why would anybody in their right mind fake an illness so severe that they have to have people wipe their butts and 
change their adult diapers and like be bodily dependent on somebody like that. I mean, that's like a nightmare. Why would you choose to do that? That's crazy. And I don't think she's crazy. So I don't know what to think. If, or if there's some option I'm not thinking of. But right now, those are the options. A ghost, Lenora, is faking, or somebody else in the house is doing weird stuff. I kind of think it's leaning toward Lenora's faking and that she did kill her family. Because right now, the main character is thinking that the guy that got her pregnant is the one that killed her family. And the reason she's done what she's done is that she was covering for him. <laughs> Oh, and it turns out that Carter, the groundskeeper, only took the job because his he was a bartender and one of his p patrons knew him and had found out, he found a picture of Lenora when she, eight months before the murder, being pregnant. That's the right timing. You, Your dad was left on Christmas Day, 1929. You were born that same time. I mean, your grand, he was born that same time. Everything fits. So he's there to find out if she's his grandma, basically. Anyway, I'm just rambling. I'm sleepy. Uh, I don't know if this is my favorite way to do a thriller where you, like, back the characters into a corner and then there's, like, different interpretations. And I feel like I really want him to surprise me and have it be none of those things. And if he does do that, and I am surprised, then I will maybe consider reading another one of his books. But if it's one of those three options, I think he, I think it's going to be, he's going to do Lenora faking. But if it's a ghost or somebody else from the house is doing stuff, then it's just like, why? I, that's, I mean, it, he's gone for every thriller cliche in the book at this point. So I feel like I shouldn't expect that much, but. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, so I'm gonna... Woo! I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm gonna wake up and finish it. And then I'll, I'll check in probably after work. Because, yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. Good night. Riley Sager's just reaching now. He's just reaching. Okay, so I'm on page 302. And uh, I'm very interested. I need to know what happens. Okay, so I didn't feel this way in his other book. So, you know, this is better than The Home Before Dark. But... Okay, so what we've got here, I, I don't, I don't, I can't catch you guys up. I can't. It's too much. I think Virginia's alive. I think she's hiding in the house. That's my theory now. Because apparently she was hanging from the chandelier and the cops took her down and she wasn't dead and she didn't die for another six months and they just left her in the house. They didn't take her to the hospital. Like, what the f That makes no sense, but okay. So uh, she's totally still alive. Uh, that's who the, the creeper is in the middle of the night and that's why... You know, whatever. Miss Baker's a shithead. She was having an affair with husband and she made a deal with Lenora and she's control. I don't know. Lots of stuff. So basically what's going on now is Kit has decided she's going to solve this because the house is literally falling into the sea. And <laughs> like there's cracks. The chimney fell in. It's like, get out of there, you idiots. But she's decided that she's going to that she's going to do stuff. And she's discovered that the baby daddy, his wife, is still in a retirement home and that Lenora and Mrs. Baker, the housekeeper, have been paying her a thousand dollars a month for since 2019-29, which is like six hundred thousand dollars that it adds up to. So she takes a little John into the city saying that she's gonna run an errand. She borrows the car and she's like, uh and then she goes to see Bernice Mayhew is her name. And of course, she's completely lucid. She's been in a nursing home, but she's completely lucid. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it could happen. And then she gets there and she, she lies to the people and is like, I'm from the insurance company, which is fine. And she goes, you know, call the insurance company. You know, I'll just be five minutes, blah, blah, blah. So apparently, I mean, she's been in there like three minutes and <laughs> the cops come in. <laughs> Which, first of all, if she was going to call, she goes, somebody did call the insurance company. Okay, if she did, she would have had to wait on hold. Okay, A. B, the cops wouldn't have gotten there that fast. And C, they send Detective Vic, who's on Kit's case. He's the one that tried to convict her of her mother's murder also. And 
why would they send Detective Vic for some random nurse? Like, she didn't say her name. <laughs> why would they send the f***ing detective to this random person's... I, I, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, that doesn't make sense. And Riley Sager is determined... Like, he just... You're so caught up. I almost didn't notice it. I was just going, 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 flipping the pages. But it doesn't make any sense. A. And B, when he shows up... And I caught this one, by the way. I totally called it Mary Milton. She's the nurse, the caregiver who was murdered. Uh, and he's convinced that she committed suicide because she had a suicide note. But the suicide note, all it was was a single line. And I was like, well, duh. She had that in her pocket. And obviously Lenora gave it to her. And Lenora wrote it. And the stupid cop just assumed that it was a suicide note. And sure enough, that's what happens. But here's the stupid part. <laughs> is that they're at the care home, Ocean View or whatever. And he's just pulled her out of Bernice Mayhew's room. And she's like, Mary Melton was murdered. Why won't you get that through your head? And they're like talking through the details of the case. And for some reason, he's telling her all these details of the case from 29. Whatever. But then she goes, Mary Melton was murdered. And he's like, no, she was. She killed herself. See, here's her suicide note. And he just pulls it out of his pocket. What? He's just carrying her suicide note around just in case. Why? He could have just taken her to the police station and shown her if he was going to do that. But like, it's, why would it? Why? He thought this. I mean, they're her, they've already had her funeral. Why would he still be carrying it around? He's not investigating anything. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I have like 80 pages left. I'll be back. I have to go get ready for work. Update. I was half right. Virginia is still alive. Really spoilers. If you do not want to know, leave. Okay. So, Virginia, they pulled her down. Wait, did I already say that? Did I already tell you guys she was alive? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I told you that, that she was in a coma for six... She wasn't. She wasn't in a coma. Lenora is actually Miss Mrs. Baker. So, she... Uh, basically, what happened is that the person who's... And typey typeys we've been reading this whole time is actually Virginia. Virginia is the paralyzed one. And Lenora forced her identity on Virginia so that she could have a life and not be under the sway of people, everyone thinking she killed her family. She didn't. She, Lenora did not kill everyone. So Lenora is innocent, but then she kept her sister prisoner <laughs> for years because she wanted a life. That's literally the only reason. The baby was born and the dad took it away from Virginia and important context, Lenora was not his daughter. Uh, did I already say that last night? Don't remember. I was half asleep. But Virginia was his daughter, and she, he's, he took the baby away from her, and she was devastated. So I haven't gotten confirmation of it yet, but Lenora says Virginia killed them. Virginia killed mom and dad, and then killed, tried to kill herself, which is why she was hanging. And then Lenora took the chair away from under her <laughs> so that the police would think that something else happened. Okay. What? Wait, I, I opened this for a reason. Hold on. I don't remember why I was going to check in with you guys, but I have to get ready for work. So I'm really mad right now that I can't finish this before work. I'm on page 326. So, I mean, I'll give it that. But also, like, the sister swapsy thing, like, that's been done before. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't see it <laughs> coming. So, yeah, so it looks like that's what happened is that Virginia killed them, but we don't know that for sure yet. Lenora says that she killed them because they took the baby away and she was mad and she wanted revenge. Oh, I know why I wanted to come in and check. I wanted it on camera. I think that Kit is related to the hopes. I think Kit is a hope. Because, I mean, there's literally no evidence for this other than, like, it feels like something this author would do. Uh, nobody knows what happened to the baby. And I think that Carter is a red herring. And I think that just this is just a gut instinct. I could very well be wrong. But I think that her father is the baby that... Lenora took from her sister and they did something to it. I could very well be wrong and Carter is, is the grandchild. and But I feel like that would not be Riley Sager's style. I feel like if anyone's going to be the secret baby, it's Len uh, Kit's dad. So we'll see if I'm right. Check it after work. <laughs> Hello, it is I. I, who have finished this book. I'm giving this three stars. So he went up a star. But here's the deal. Even though I found myself like crazily turning the pages 
and there was twist after twist after twist near the end. I was wrong about some stuff. I was right about others in a twisted sort of way. Uh, it was just, it was too much. So for me, like the craziness of this ending just takes away from the impact. Like when there's that, <laughs> when there's that many twists, it's, it, they just lose their flavor and also it's overwhelming. So it's just, it's nowhere near as satisfying as like a single or maybe even two really well executed twists. So like, like it was just like ridiculous. I don't even know where to begin to tell you how many twists they were, there were and what the twists were like. It was like, okay, so first of all, I was right that there was a family connection. I sensed that coming, but I was wrong that he was the baby it turns out he planted a pretty good red herring in that Ricardo Mayhew was not the person having the affair with Virginia. I told you they did the sister swap, right? Yeah. So that was Ricardo Mayhew was having an affair, but it was with Archie the cook. So his wife was right that he he was cheating on her, but not with her, well, not with uh, Lenora slash Virginia. Second, Ricky was Patrick McDear, a.k.a. our main character's dad. So her dad murdered Mary the nurse, and he also finished the murder of the mom. The mom murdered the dad because she was sick of his bullshit, and also, like, because she could see that Virginia was really upset that he took away her baby, and she was like, I've had it, and she stabs him, and then she stabbed herself, but she wasn't dying, so she asked somebody to finish her off and Patrick McDear aka Ricky did the job for some reason I don't know that it, it felt really convoluted like it was so convoluted at the end and then and then it turns out whoops after that that Virginia did try to kill herself because she lost everything the person she loved her son her family everything and so she tried to kill herself and then she went into the com the she was paralyzed or whatever. She was ill. And then Lenora did her thing and blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> the very end of the book, <laughs> it ended with the, the dad coming back to inexplicably kill Virginia. Even though she hasn't told anyone anything and no one's gonna, and he's just like, I have to protect my secret. And I don't know. I just felt... It felt really contrived to me. I don't, it just didn't ring true. It felt like he did it because he wanted nobody to be able to guess that he did it. But also the reason nobody guessed that he did it is because it doesn't make sense. <sighs> Whatever. Like he had no motive to murder the mother. Like none whatsoever. I feel like I'm missing something. What else happened at the end? Oh yeah, I was right about her faking it. Virginia was faking it. She could walk, she could write, she could talk the whole time. Which also... Like, he tries to write it off as, like, she was doing it as revenge to Lenora and having, ruining Lenora's life because Lenora had to stay there and look after her. But, and keep her alive for the inheritance or whatever. But, like, no sane person would stay in their bed for 40 years. Not moving and just pretending and, and letting them, it, like, it doesn't make sense. He, again, he just did it for the twist. And so the book ends, like, and I, I'm such a sap. I fell for it. The book ends with the, the house falling into the sea with Lenora and Patrick like calmly in there just ready to die and they hold hands and and like they don't even know each other. Why are they holding each other's hands? And then uh, this is the part I liked. Uh, Virginia, still in her guise of invalid, goes to live with Kit and they form this little happy relationship and Lenora is like fascinated with TV and like all the stuff she's been missing and being outside and all this stuff and but then she leaves one night in the middle of the night and she leaves Kit a note saying oh by the way I this whole time I was faking and blah blah and she tries to explain it and then you get a second little epilogue saying it's her obituary saying that she was survived by all this family oh by the way Jesse the cleaner was her granddaughter she came there to find her because the, the baby, uh, his name was Marcel, who is Kit's half-brother, he died in 1982 uh, of, of cancer. And so the granddaughter was all that was left of, of Lenora's baby. I, I mean, of Virginia's baby. And so they all ended up, like, 
well, Jesse got married, but Kit ended up taking care of Virginia for the rest of her life and being her traveling companion across the world. And apparently Virginia got really famous for her hoax and she used to go on all the talk shows. I don't know. I liked that part. I liked the ending. Um, but this was so weird. Like, this is exactly what I don't like about thrillers is just cheap twists with no substance that don't make sense because they're in it for the twist itself, not for like any internal logical consistency or theme. And also what I like, I don't have any emotional connection to these characters. They're, they're just, they're just little character puppet people for Todd to move around for shock value. And I just, I'm like, I don't get it. So I, I, I no longer have beef with Riley Sager slash Todd. I did enjoy this. It, it entertained me. But it's also not great. It's just, it like, there are so many better thrillers that have good characters. Or, like, the, the twists just add to the pleasure. They aren't the entire thing. And the book doesn't fall apart once you know the twist. Like, I would never want to reread this. Now that I know what happens, it's like the pleasure's all gone. Like, the only thing getting me through was like, I want to know what happens. I want to know what happens. I know what happens now. And I'm like, okay, fine. You're good. You know what I mean? I guess, like, some people just really like that feeling. And I just don't. I, I, need, I need an emotional connection to my books. So, anyway. Second chance Riley Sager completed. Three stars. I did like it better. I probably won't be reading any more Riley Sager unless he, like, switches genres or I hear, like something exceptional about one of his books definitely not reading middle of the night that sounds boring and I don't want to read it so I hope this has been somewhat entertaining sorry if I spoiled you and you didn't want to be spoiled I did I did warn you though so yeah anyway if you guys want me to do this again let me know if you have authors that you would like me to give a second chance to if there's somebody you know I've hated and you think that I should give them another chance feel free to suggest but next up probably will be, like I said at the beginning of the video, Samantha Shannon, because I read The Bone Season in 2013, and I gave it two stars, and she has since revised that book, and I want to read the author's preferred text and see not only do I appreciate this more now as a story, but also, like, what did she do to it to make it better? Because it just, it was so amateurish. And it was so try hard back in the day. Like, I just was like, dude, calm down. You don't need to prove to everybody that you're the smartest cookie. Just chill. <laughs> so hopefully, and like, that's what I found in Prior of the Orange Tree and Day of Fall and Night. That I want that. So anyway, that's probably going to be next. <laughs> Actually, I know it's going to be because I'm reading it in September. It's on my TBR. So thank you for watching. Please let me know if there's any authors that you have hated one of their books and you gave them a second try for some unfathomable reason and it worked out for you. I'd like to hear those stories. I find them really gratifying for some reason. And if you've made it this far, please leave me a typewriter. Is there a typewriter emoji for, for the only one left? And please leave me a like and subscribe if you want to. And I hope you're having a great day. Bye.